Welcome, thank you for your attendance this evening to Kayev 2020 and its new look for the given circumstances which none of us could have predicted. To start proceedings, I'm going to ask Annie Jeanette Singleton to start us off to give a few words about this land in which we're all meeting, um, which used to be my stomping ground when I was a young person. But mind you, lots of barbed wire as opposed to what we're now able to experience. So please welcome to the stage, Annie Jeanette Singleton. Thanks, Marilyn. I've known Marilyn for a very long time. I remember her when she was a little girl, because I was friends with her father and me and his family. Well, I want to Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all here tonight for the um, Wakaya, for the undercurrent, Cook 2020. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge, I'd like to acknowledge the Lord Jesus and my ancestors, both past and present, and on behalf of Eric Kenji. Our tribal group would like to welcome you here tonight at the tanks. And I, this exhibition, I have been in here just a bit earlier and had a look at all these paintings and they're fantastic. So it's great what I've seen on the wall, full wall. We have some very good artists. And, uh, I'd like to welcome you all, as I said, to uh, the undercurrent, and I'd also like to acknowledge Seed as well, of the Gimoy Wallabari Dindimo. Now, um, when I saw Captain Cook, I mean, I, to me personally, my personal feeling about Captain Cook is this. I'm glad when I look at the world around me today and I'm glad it was Captain Cook that came with the British. I'm one of them that very much support Captain Cook and his trip coming out here to, to Australia, being an early explorer. Two reasons. One, I am a Christian and he brought the Bible with him. And the Bible tells me quite clearly that the man from Galilee is the one that gave me is the is the one that gave me my he gave me my freedom and he also made me equal with every other race in the world. I can't say that about the Australian Constitution because the year is 2020. And we're not even mentioning it at all. So we're still a people living a life of, of bondage, living a life of the end, living a life of oppression in our own country. And that's how I see it. Cook 2020, it's not Captain Cook, it's not the British, it's those people in Canberra who sit around the table whether they're Liberal or Labour or, you will, or whatever political party they belong to, they're the ones who haven't got the guts to make a decision. So it's no use blaming Captain Cook way back there because, as I said, it's 2000 and, it's 2020. 
So I told those fellas in Canberra who thinks that uh, they know everything, but that's what it is. And we, as Australian people, we got to, well, we got to live with it. Now, on the other end, I've had two, in the 1800s, I've got two grandfathers. One was an Aboriginal man. He was given a breastplate in 1898. He lived all his life on a Cairns Esplanade. They gave him a title, King of Baron. He was my great-grandfather. His sister was my great-grandmother. And of course, also the other grandfather of mine was a white Australian. And where does white Australia come from? England. And he wasn't a convict either. So I'm connected to the two race black and white, I suppose, somewhere along the line, but that's who I am. And I've got no... I, I, it doesn't worry me the least. I'm happy, I've moved on with my life, and I'm looking forward to whatever's in the future for me. I just thank God that I am who I am. So it's great to be here tonight to welcome you for the first time to Kiev. 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you, Annie Jeanette Singleton of Yuri Kanji Bob. Um, uh, with Lieutenant Cook at the time of his being on these lands, who then became captain once he returned to England, uh, he brought many things with, uh, with him, not just the Bible, but um, other things. And um, that was a nice segue for me to remind you to please use the hand sanitizer during this time of COVID, C19. <laughs> I'd now like to welcome to the stage somebody I went to high school with. So Anna Jeanette knew me when I was little. Now the next speaker knew me when we were in high school together. Please welcome to the stage, C Guju Guju Four Mile. Yep. Hello, how are you? I got my daughter up here as well. She's gonna add some percussion while I talk. So the percussions, so no worries. So this is Lily, but the tribal name is Bubungu, which is white lightning. Um, so just like to welcome everybody here on behalf of my mob, give my wallow you didn't people. Just like you say, Bilangaran, Bilangaran Yundu, Bilangaran Yundu na BMB, on behalf of my father, welcome the country. Bilangaran Yundu na Yiri Nyala, on behalf of Yiri Nyala as well, welcome the country. Um, I also like to say thanks to Janet. I, I think she's bomb, but um, yeah, and the Irukandji people as well. In regards to our mob here, and especially with Gima Wallabari Yudinya people, and especially with this exhibition about Cook and what had happened here, I suppose when, when we're talking about the 1700s, there's a lot of things, I suppose, that changed our life and our way of life and our lifestyle since, I suppose, possession, there was also dispossession. So when you look at what had happened some 250 years ago, and I love some of the art that is here, and when you actually look at one of them, I love this one here with the telescope. Okay, the telescope view of the land where you see people, people dancing, people in canoes, and yet this land was called Terranalius, land belonging to no one. Australia in itself is actually Portuguese or Dutch. So, the land itself, or Australia, means southern land. So when you look at the English on top, plus the Portuguese or Dutch underneath, half of this land before Cook arrived was actually terra australis, but also part of the Dutch colony. 
So when you look at the border of Queensland, New South Wales, west of that was actually under the Dutch, not England. And I think the history in this country needs to be taught a great deal about the history. So when we look at these exhibitions here today, we look out and talk about what is the true history. I always say there's two histories. There's an ancient history that goes back 60,000 years that doesn't even get a mention in the modern history of Australia, which started 250 years ago. That modern history, like all histories around the world, all history of all continents has the ancient history plus the more modern history. But somewhere there's been a line that has been drawn where 60,000 years of history doesn't like to be mentioned, but the past 250 does. So when we look at undercurrents and the journey of Cook, I love the cookbook as well of Australia. And when we look at the journal itself, a number of Cook's written history in his journal actually takes count of my mother's country, which is Kungaji country. People know of Yarraba. Her country has the history of Joseph Banks going to a place we call Giriga, we also call Maracabra, which is King Beats, and he goes up to the top and he takes account of 4,000 unknown species of plants. Now this is in his account, Joseph Banks' account of landing here on my mother's country, Kunganji country, over at Yarraba. They went there to get some water, fresh water, very close to a site we call now Yilimaka, Bana Yilimaka, which is a sacred medicine water, which they took water from for the people on the ship. When he did sail past what we know as Cairns, but my people know as Nimoy, they have counts of fires and smoke in the hillside of Trinity Bay. They were fires from my people, Yidinji people. They never came into Cairns or landed into Cairns but they did sail past it. Those historical records are in his journal. They later went on and sailed up to my grandmother's country, which is Kukuyimiti, where the ship ran aground at Ndeba River, hence the name of the ship. So when we talk about a history of our people, our people are only written in certain parts of the history. The one of sailing past, the ones of acknowledging the 4,000 plants that Joseph Banks took account of, stealing of water as my people saw them on my mother's side, my father's people putting up smoke signals to tell everybody along the way that there's this stranger on our land. That was in the 1770s. We fast forward that another couple of hundred years to 1876 when this place 
we call pants, has been born. And the controversy that happened here is something that is still not written about. It's not spoken about. And, you know, always when you speak and you speak a truth about a past history, it is always told to get over it. Yet, we have to remember the past 250 years, but we told to get over the past 250 years of our people, our race that lived here for two, you know, 2,500 generations, I go back to this country here. And so when you look at Cairns being only 140 years of colonization, invasion, the history here is not seen. We had massacre sites at Skeleton Creek that we call Banajabagar. We had a number of massacres also at a place we call Wangali, which is known as Goldsboro Valley, at a ceremonial site, the White Cockatoo ceremonial site, where a number of our people were shot and killed. We have other places up at Davies Creek, well known for a history of young children being buried in sand with their heads sticking out. And that's not written in our history. So when we talk about Captain Cook or Lieutenant Cook, because he was not a captain, he was only a lieutenant. But it's not so much talking about the history of possession. We must also remember the history of dispossession. And we still face dispossession today as a people, as a tribal people from our own countries, not just my tribal people, but many nations of tribes all around this country. The history that we are told to get over it. There's a saying in regards to the answer, lest we forget, meaning to always remember the fallen. Yet we are constantly told to get over it and forget what happened to our people. My daughter here saw an exhibition a play about my sister, Bukal. And she saw one of our regalia of my great-grandfather that was taken away to England. I actually saw it at the London Museum, but not of any place of reverence or relevance. It was in the basement. I also saw 2,000 Yidinji shields with bullet holes in them. Not out anywhere where you can see it. That was also in the basement. So when I look at the shield from Brother Paul Bond and some of them with the bullet holes in, my mind goes back to that time of going into the British Museum and seeing that. But when my daughter saw her great, great, great grandfather's regalia, the shell necklace that was taken away, 
one thing she said to me was that how can you respect them? How can you trust them? Out of the mouths of babes. And this day and age, when we look at some of the art, my niece's art up there, Heather, and the landlord reminds me of something from Picasso's The Scream. It screams at you. It shows you that, wow, this person in the foreground of that is hiding something from the people in the background. Is taking something away from the people in the background. So, when we talk about undercurrents, everything might look calm on top, but underneath there's this undercurrent that our society does not want to talk about. And I hope this exhibition tonight brings that to the fore. My grandfather was given, my great-grandfather was given the king plate, king of Cairns. His name was Yin. The king of Cairns is a title and a construct from a more colonialized history. My grandfather, my great-grandfather was a Nalan, Maya Yirinji Nalan. They met with one of the reverends who came here and brought Christianity. And they sat with him and asked, what is your law? Two of my great-grandfathers, they asked, what was your law? They told them the law of the Bible or the religion. And my grandfathers said, your law was similar to our law in regards to thou shalt not steal because no man can take possession of another tribal man's country. They looked at that. And yet, this land, the commandment, and one of the commandments of that law is the first law that was broken on this country. So, I just like to say thank you. You know, Jabagaran Yanan, Nay Yalan, Nay Yabirin Nagara, Nay Malawagurin. While you sit on this country, while you stand on this country, we still live on a country that we are told to get over it, and we can't because na yena yena gara, na yabo gara yala. My foot still stands on this country. We still fought for it, and we still are fighting for it. So. Have a good evening, enjoy the exhibition, and take into the count of modern history and an ancient history. That's what the undercurrents is about. Thank you. Thank you, Guchu Guchu. Um, some very poignant uh, pieces of information in, in what Siti or Guju Guju shared with us. Um, in particular, Banks's Florilegium, Florilegium, I should say. Um, the ABC did a, a production on that many, many years ago, and I know because I worked on it as a young film editing assistant. Um, but to think that 4,000 plant species actually came from up this way is quite phenomenal. And that, that's country which it relates to all of us in this room, if not culturally specific to a few of us. So we heard many numbers, 4,000, one of them, the number of shields in the London Museum. 
um, CHIAF 2020 is delivering 10 days with 500 plus artists. We have 15 spotlights. We have three workshops, three conversations, one major symposium, two exhibitions, one which you're being surrounded by this evening. We have the art awards, comedy, music, and the fashion show. The spotlights are community uh, spotlights, community exposés or exposures from the Torres Strait and from as far west as Pomperel. The workshops include weaving, artifacts and spear making. The weaving headed by Merendi Schreiber, the artifacts by Garth Merger, and the spear making in Yarrabah community. The conversations are facilitated by Wesley Enoch, Artistic Director of Sydney Festival, of which it will be his last one next year. That will talk about tourism and the positive impact on communities as well as the visitor. It will talk about Cook 2020 and the artist's response. It will also talk to fa about fashion and many of the designers. The symposium will be facilitated by Brenda Croft. She will be speaking with Marindu Yana of the Crocodile Case fame. She will also be speaking with Alexis Wright, the author, as well as Badger Bates, the artist. Like I mentioned, there are two exhibitions, one of which is this, Undercurrents, Cook 2020. Um, there's also the climate change, of which we're expecting something like 300 artworks being involved in the art fair. In this particular exhibition, there are 33 artists, one of which will be speaking to close this evening. It comments on the impact of Cook, positive or negative, often left up to the viewer to discern. The Art Awards will be presented by Elaine Crombie, who is both a singer as well as a comedian. The comedy is once again conducted by return visitor Sean Chilbera. And the music, which will close out Kayaf 2020, will be from local talent Zenith. The fashion show, often a hit of Kayaf, has a theme of water and once again curated and as well as contributed by Bernard Singleton, whose artwork is here, Bernard Singleton Jr. by the way, and Simone Arnold, and also welcoming back Hans R. Wayne as choreographer. So we are surrounded by many artists, some of which uh, Gudja Gudja mentioned, um, Paul Bong on the sides, his, his shields. Uh, we, are met, we are surrounded by other names, other really well-known and, and welcome names, familiar names, um, such as Namok, Bianca Porter, Murga, uh, as I look around, I've mentioned Singleton, Brown, um, but one of those in particular is our own Meeks. Like I said, he will close out the night's proceedings. But before him, I'd like to welcome the brain behind all of this and the fearless leader to just come and share some thoughts. Please welcome to the podium, Janina Harding. Thank you, Marilyn. Here we are again comes around so quickly. Um, thanks, Marilyn. Can I just thank uh, Jeanette Singleton and Gudra Gudra for their, their take on what Cook represents and for their warm welcome um, to their country. When COVID-19 happened in March, we sort of got wind of it in March this year, 2020, and it was sort of like, God, what are we going to do? <laughs> Running this thing called Kayaf, it was like, what, what are we going to do? Um, we decided just to put it online and make everybody happy. We thought it was going to be an easy process where we just sort of chuck it all on the, on the World Wide Web and everyone will be happy. But we didn't sort of fathom whether, you know, what the restrictions would do with how people react with the restrictions, what was going to happen with restrictions, people in lockdown, how they're going to do art. Communities are in total lockdown in the Cape and the Torres Strait. How are they going to get their work here? It was all this confusion and not really knowing what we were going to do. But here we are today. Um, firstly, I just want to thank every artist that put their work in and their commitment to Kayaf and to their own, to, to our people, basically, because what they're doing is sharing their, their, their thoughts, their ideas about being sovereign people on this country, in this exhibition, and 
an EX vision. Everything they do is all about that. Um, and just thank them, you know, from my heart that they could bring their work here to the Tanks Art Centre tonight so you can all view it. Because, um, you know, we, we've got a couple of art centres. We've got Pomperor and Hopevale. Oh, not Hopevale. Um, yeah, Hopevale, sorry. Um, who were ringing me up saying, well, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know, you know, the restrictions are so, so much. We don't know whether we can, how can we do this? Because we're not allowed to leave the house and how do we give the, the artist materials and how, you know, how's this all going to happen? And the same thing happened to the art fair itself as well. So thank goodness that the managers and people that were support around in the communities that, you know, they could actually do their work and make it happen. So I just want to thank those artists, every artist, you know, that put their work in here. I also want to thank Jack Wilkie Jans, who wrote the essay in this magnificent little catalogue that you, all, you can all pick up. <laughs> Um, if you haven't read it yet, it's magnificent yeah, insight into um, how he, what he's taking his um, hook and um, how he, well, what he thinks about, you know, about what, what, what goes on in a young man's mind living in Cairns. It's all in here, okay, so have a read. Um, so basically I was standing here before you as a sovereign woman especially at this Cook exhibition. Um, I'm here representing Eru from the Eastern Torres Straits, and my lineage goes into Cuckoo, which is um, northeast of Cape York. 2020 marks the, 20, the 250 years of Cook's maiden voyage, and we've heard it before, of the east coast of what is now known as Australia. So what does Cook mean to me? Mean to me? Well, he symbolises colonisation. And colonisation has, has tried to control our sovereign people in this country. Even though we've never given up, we've never given up our sovereignty. It was never ceded. The fact is that our worldview is in direct conflict with the colonial worldview. Our cultures are different. They're totally separate. There's a culture for us and there's a culture for people that came here. And that hasn't kind of filtered through over all these generations that have come since Cook first landed. That hasn't filtered through. Nobody gets it. I don't know why, but nobody's getting it. But I have this wonderful book and it's called White Fella Culture. You should all get a copy of this. You can go through this, this wonderful um, Alice Springs bookshop. You can order it online through Red Kangaroo. If you go Google Red Kangaroo bookshop, you can buy a copy for 20 bucks or less than $20. It's worthwhile, I tell you. Even if you're, if you're black and you don't understand white culture, this is, a, this is a book to buy. If you're white and understand black culture, this is the book to buy. We have law, L-O-W, L-A-W. Colonisation does not recognise our spiritual concepts of our law and custodianships of this land. Under the early days of colonisation, a very convenient concept arose, and it was called terra nullius, and Gutu Gutu spoke of it before. And he says, you know, as Gutu Gutu said, he said, land belonged, that was their, their, their thing, land belonged to no one. So they came here, what were we? Invisible. Our country became a free-for-all for the white man and ultimately legitimised genocide. Even though we challenged the colonial regime to the right of our land through warfare, you know, we've had protests, warfare in the, begin warfare in the beginning, we've had protests since, People have walked off country, you know, from missions and stuff. But today we continue to be judged on whether we're entitled to our land on a native title. Many of us, many of us believe the native title is not land rights, and it never will be. 
but a watered-down version that suits the colonial invader's objective. Through a colonial lens, there is no room to recognise our evolving culture. And this is, this, is the, this is when it goes like this. Instead, we as a people are relegated to be only legitimate custodians if we are living in a pre-contact lifestyle. So for us walking around here today, nobody sees that we belong to the land. It is this type of illusion that continues to be part of the heart of white Australia and policy makers when dealing with first peoples of this country. We are entitled to our land if it fits a colonizer's idea of what constitutes all the we are, only, we are only entitled to our land if it fits a colonised idea of what constitutes authenticity. Like basically we've got to go back and live pre-contact. They completely disregard our capacity to adapt and survive the damage of colonisation. We continue to be denied our land and our liberty as the dominant culture targets our people through racist acts of genocide, through government policy, policies, the judiciary, the constabulary, or wherever our rights as First Peoples might impinge on the colonial worldview. Now, much of the work in undercurrents, and undercurrents came about, that title came about because we're just here. We're not up here, we're under here, we're under here but we're still kind of rippling over the, when a dominant culture is coming down to repress us. So the work here in Kundakarant signifies, it all, all the work here, signifies law and custodianship of land. We know that passing on knowledge to care for land maintains a stable society. Caring for land is intrinsic to the health of all life forms. The way country is treated is also the way in which people and other living beings will be treated. That is our worldview. Land is our law. There will, there will be no equity for us in this continent, now known as Australia, if people refuse to ignore our law, L-A-W. What you see tonight, through every word, is a take on the tipping point for colonisation. So Cook arrived and went, Shh. The work you see in undercurrents reveals our take on Cook as a father of colonisation in this country. Some of it is done with black humour. Not the white black humour, which is sort of dark, but the BLAK humour, which is more tongue in cheek and which smacks of satire. And you can see that all around you. For example, we've got Christine Holroyd's work, which is called Captain Cook Sneaking Up on the Locals. It gives us a sense that Cook and his crew don't belong on country and only take and the only way for them to feel at ease is to be menacing and armed. We've got da Daisy Hamlock's work from um, Hopevale, Stole Their Clothes, it's titled as. And it has a, large, a larger figure in the foreground of a sovereign man with his spear overseeing the smaller naked white men as they chase off the camp, ca as they chase off the camp dogs chased off by camp dogs. So you kind of see this, this kind of thing going on when you really look at the work. I believe all the working undercurrents reveals to take on Cook and colonisations, colonisation. What artists show us here tonight is our love for our country. Even though we, we continue to endure the brunt of colonisation, we're resilient and proud of our identity. Our land and our law, L-A-W, keeps a fire in our valleys to keep pushing back against the colonial regime, because it still exists, whether non-Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people believe it, don't believe it, it exists in our life, it's, it's prevalent in our life, it's, it's there every day. You know, sometimes we, get, we, we find ourselves in court, sometimes we find ourselves protesting, and sometimes we show the ridiculousness 
of colonisation through our art. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you for that insight, Janina. Um, so moving on, uh, like I mentioned, we will hear from one of the artists, um, internationally renowned artists, Mr. Aron Mix. Hi, everyone. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> so I've been invited to talk as a participating artist for this exhibition, Cross Currents. Um, my name is Aron Mix. I'm a saltwater cook imagey man, traditionally from Laura Cooktown. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this beautiful country on which we gather and pay my respects to elders both past, present and the future. And thank Aunt, Auntie Jeanette and Brother Seth there for their powerful words and Janina. Um, I've been asked as a participating artist to say a few words on my input into this exhibition. Not only as an artist but also the way Kayaf is presenting this year. I know we had to make major adjustments to get Kaif uh, on this digital media platform, um, and I believe this to be a great step towards the future and connecting all of our communities one time. And of course, the exhibition will be up longer and will reach a global market. I believe for those who have yet to experience Kaif, this will be an extraordinary, accessible event. The brief that went out to the arts community and artists was that Undercurrents addresses the imbalance of written colonial history versus First Peoples' oral histories through a collection of paintings, works on paper, sculpture, photography, textile installations, and screen. Artists surveyed the impact of Cook and what he represents to the First Peoples of Queensland. And for a number of communities, it was about the sighting of Cook, him gathering supplies, tracking, recording, and giving an overview of the east coast of Australia through his charts. Not all his encounters were hospitable or considerate to unique and ancient cultures uh, that had existed here for thousands of years, as Janina had elaborated on a little more so. Um, in fact, it, it was only when he hit the reef near Cooktown that Cook finally listened, spoke to and recorded with the local mob without any major conflict. It was a little Aboriginal man in ceremonial ochres that offered Cook a broken tipped spear as a symbol of no bloodshed here, as an act of reconciliation. This is in the diaries of Cook, by the way. This is another untold part of our shared history along with the many oral historical stories that are contained in this exhibition. I would like to thank Janina and Hetty Perkins, who curated these works from art centres, local independent artists, and gallery represented artists. This exhibition reveals the black resilience of sovereign nations. Undercurrents is a platform for truth telling from an individual, family, community, or first, per first people's worldview and as important as non-Indigenous history and is as important as the non-Indigenous history of this country. I thank you for being here tonight. Please take time to discover. Thank you. Thank you, Aron. Um, thank you, everybody else who has uh, graced us with your presence. Um, thank you, my fellow board members, Mayor Bob Manning, uh, Gil Mailman, and Aron himself. Uh, thank you to the staff of, of Kayaf and the support crew, the production crew, our contractors who have helped, who are helping to bring through the digital platform for all you and the wider Australian audience and the international audience. Thank you, Tanks, for housing the exhibition, and thank you to our sponsors and other partners. The irony is, mm, COVID has graced us with a, a, a new future, just as Cook's arrival graced us 250 years ago with a new future. Go forth and explore yours. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.